Welcome everybody to another edition of Zaner's Week in Review. Uh, with me, as always, my colleague in the Chicago office, Peter Thomas. Hello, everybody. It's uh, always good to be back and good to see you, Peter. And and uh, I see you have your uh, Chinese New Year garb on. Absolutely. The uh, the year of the rat uh, yes. begins um, uh, this evening. And uh, I have two adopted kids from China. So, so Lunar New Year is a big deal in my household. There's a right. big performance tonight at my children's Lovely. school. And this is my attire. It's the only time I, I get to wear it. And, and I can say, welcome, Sensei. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pete, uh, what, what yeah. do you know? Well, um, as you know, uh, last week's uh, show, we discussed the disease that had the outbreak in China, the closing of the ports, the railway systems. I just saw some photos today of some, of some of the railway systems, and it really looked like panic uh, on uh, – on Thursday, when they were shutting things down, people wanted out, and they were, right. you know, it was uh, right out of the movies, you know, stuff on their head, you know, gear on their back, headed out, you know, and uh, and, and you and, know, it, it's interesting, in, in in given the situation, being in a large crowd like that is not where you really want to be. Well, yeah, exactly, that's very well put. I mean, you know, but it was uh, everyone had their masks on, you know, various grades of masks on, and and uh, and they were all headed out, and uh, it would it 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 doesn't appear to be slowing down. Is where I'm headed with this. Right, right. And so and I, and I had heard and, yeah. uh, that uh, the the uh, gentleman who was sort of in charge of the SARS epidemic a number of years ago, right, thought that the the virus might have entered through the eye. Um, now that's in which case the masks aren't going to do a heck of a lot of good. Well, um, that that's total. That's I read it in a report. Uh, Generally yeah. speaking, uh, a virus, it, it's a, the virus is, they feel it's coming from bat, uh, consumption of bats in a certain area. And the, the, it's, it's a waterborne, so it, if you sneeze or cough, you will convey it. So uh, you, if you can get someone sneezes or coughs, you get droplets in the eye to go through the membrane, uh, you know, through the uh, tear duct in, in uh, obviously you can inhale it and it can come in through your mouth. Those are the, those are the three uh, entry points. And uh, I listened to someone from WHO, World Health Organization last night, and he was kind of breaking that down. That was kind of the summation I got. And for our viewers, I always refer to Pete as the most interesting man in the world because he did go to med school, if I recall correctly, correct? <laughs> for a short time, yeah, I did. As, uh, I had, my bedside manner wasn't quite what it should have been. Stop right. complaining. <laughs> you know, right. Take this pill, you'll get better, you know. But uh, All right. yeah. let's, uh, let's not get too far off course. Oh, no, but, but let's, but let's, let's review very, yeah. That. Uh, Wuhan has, has essentially been locked down. Lu that is true. Wuhan has a population of 11 million people. Which is small. Which is, a, yeah, which is yeah. sort of a small, quaint Chinese uh, village. Almost. Little hamlet. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It is, it is one of the fourth busiest rail hubs in China. Uh, it, it's, it's on the new Silk Road. Right. Uh, so... You know, and, and, and this is all happening in what is frequently referred to as the biggest human migration in the world, um, where 300 million Chinese uh, get on the, the rail system and on planes and so forth to travel to their family homes. Um, in, in this case, typically um, from the, the major cities on the East Coast uh, to the family homes in the West, uh, a lot of those routes pass through Wuhan. Uh, and they've been shut down. There, that's, there's that's nothing in, nothing out of Wuhan. And one of the things that you and I talked about during the week is um, the the possible impact on freight uh, traffic. Yes. Through through China. So not just within China, uh, but um, Wuhan has um, a, a, any number of trains passing through that go all the way to Europe uh, along and, the new Silk and, Road. And the new expanse going up into Russia. Uh, so, you know, not only does it impact the EU, it impacts 
all of the northern reaches and it's it's part of to to go to your point the new expanse of the bullet trains which has been just unbelievable uh all of those trains leaving from points of there which move gold and silver by the way aren't aren't moving right yeah so we we saw uh commodities get hit pretty hard um this this week um copper in particular um has retraced a pretty big chunk of the, oh yeah um, uh, of the trade deal inspired rally. So it's been more, th more than a third of that rally has been retraced at this point. Uh, yep. Other commodities hit as well. Um, but but uh, what do you see happening in the, in the gold market as a result of all this? Well, I, I think what we saw, and we'll start with the precious metals very quickly. We, we, we saw the metals drifting because of the lack of participation in the Chinese New Year. Uh, they felt a lot of people weren't going to be attending the gift giving, which is very, um, they give the tenths, the quarters and the half ounce coins are very, very popular in gold there now that they can legally own and gift them. And a lot of people saw a pullback from that and the gold prices got hit, hit pretty hard and silver as well. And so uh, then today we, we saw what, what I feel, Peter was a, was kind of a uh, people saw the dip. They came in and bought some product for gifting later. Also, they uh, we got a little bit of a flight to quality, I think, as well. A little, a little bit of nervousness as to the Iwan or or to uh, the Renminbi or whatever happened, whatever you're trading at that point in China. So we saw some support come in. We also saw some numbers come in with regards to manufacturing. Um, in, in America that were a little negative. So subsequently we saw another rally in the gold. So we had two things pushing it up today. Right, right. And my, my sense was that we're seeing a little bit of a push and a pull from the uh, coronavirus threat in that kind of initially it was viewed as a deflationary event. Um, and, and again, that's sort yes. of reflected in the commodity hit. Right. Um, it, it's important to remember that um, gold is a component in just about every commodity fund um, and ETF. And so if you're dumping commodities as a result of this, you're also dumping gold. And so frequently when these types, when these types of deflationary events happen, we see gold react negatively initially. And then as the, the, the safe haven buying kind of takes over, uh, we see it rally. And, and that's sort of what we're seeing today. We're gold's up a, a little bit over 12 bucks, I think, right yeah. now. It very strong today, and and but that came in later in the day, and it, and as you were saying, I think initially, and I think you wrapped it up very well in saying that we saw initially some dumping from and which carried over, and and then all of a sudden people said, wait a minute, you know, I don't think I want to get rid of my gold. If, if we have a panic situation, I, I think I want to own it because they're going to be closing the banks. You, you know, there's not going to be any paper money around. If I have some gold around, I can I can trade for things. So. You know, in the Chinese mentality, I think that's what happened. Right. right. Yeah. And um, last week we talked quite a bit about palladium and uh, rhodium because right. they were sort of the hot commodity at, at that time. Um, what do you what are you seeing in uh, palladium uh, this week? I think what we what we saw was the expected. Let's let's talk industrial metals too because they 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 link into this, and we saw a tremendous amount of pressure because of the port closings in China. Remember, 61% of the copper goes there. I mean, this is not a small number. So, subs which is subsequently uh, zinc, lead, tin, all of the, you know, plating metals against corrosion, uh, things like that, they all got hit because they're all come by ship because they move in hundreds of tons and they all come via, via the sea and they've been under pressure since this outbreak and it carried through today. And subsequently, we saw, you know, rhodium because they're not going to be, they're slow, they're anticipating a slowdown in building of cars, hence catalytic converters. So we saw platinum, palladium get hit, get hit pretty hard today, 50, 60, 70 dollars off of the highs and uh, close lower. So um, everything kind of made sense this week. A lot of weeks, you know, you'll kind of go, I don't know what, why this ended up, but right. But this week, and, and really uh, in our show last week, I think they, it all kind of flowed together. Right. And um, I would also point out that uh, rhodium was very resilient. Not that a lot of business, I think, is yeah. getting done. But right. um, I, I know that uh, 
today and um, also yesterday, it fixed at 99.85. Uh, right. So just shy of the, the record All -time high, high. Fixed, yeah. uh, from June of 2008 at $10,100. And uh, I don't see anything to suggest um, that uh, this, this market, it, I mean, if it does correct, I think it's, it continues to be a buy. Well, I, I did an interview this morning for, with Bloomberg on industrial metals, and everything was dramatically lower. And the, the, uh, the, the, from the metals desk on, on Bloomberg, I, I, she said, what do you think? I said, I said, if I were to give recommendations, which I don't, but if I was, I, I would be a buyer at, on this break. And, and I said, if I have orders to fill and I need physicals here, these levels on this break seem to be attractive to me, especially in copper. I would start looking around in here. And, uh, and, and my mind hasn't changed at all. And as it turned out, everything turned around uh, later in the day. So I got lucky, but, you know, it just seemed, the break just seemed a little overdone. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, that about I, yeah. wraps us up for I agree. today. Uh, Pete, as always, thank you so much for your oh, time. Oh, yeah, always fun. In Quella, which is Happy New Year to you. Outstanding. Thank and, you so much. Uh, we'll, and, we'll talk again next week. I hope I'm you, Peter Grant from Denver. With I'm me Pete Thomas in Thomas Chicago. From Chicago. And, and you guys have a wonderful weekend. Good night.